Ko Wenzhou released without bail, appeal depends on key evidence. President Lai challenges China over Russian territory. Xinchu County Preschool faces child abuse allegations. German far-right party wins a state election. Doctor charged in Matthew Perry death case. Hope embarks on trip to Asia. Storm floods northern Philippine regions. Beloved Russian celebrity, spy, whale found dead. Hello, I'm Wade Lee. Thank you for joining us on Funding News. It is Tuesday, September 3rd, and here are your top stories. In local news, Ko Wenzhe, chairman of the Taiwan People's Party and former Taipei mayor, was released without bail after being detained for alleged profiteering in the Living Mall case. The prosecution plans to appeal. Journalist Huang Yangming believes that the appeal's success depends on two key pieces of evidence, proving Ke knew about the 840% floor area ratio and demonstrating a financial exchange. Without these, the appeal is unlikely to succeed. Reuters reported today that Taiwanese President Lai Qingde stated that if China wants Taiwan, it should first reclaim territory from Russia. Lai referenced the 1858 Treaty of Aigan in a TV interview, where China has ceded large areas of land to the Russian Empire. China labels Lai separatist for his stance. Taiwan's first private preschool in Xinzhou County faces allegations of child abuse. A parent claimed a teacher wrapped a crying three-year-old in a blanket, restricting movement, and later used her legs to restrain the child while using a phone. The county's Education Bureau has launched an investigation and removed the staff involved. And in global news, Germany's far right has won the most votes in a state election for the first time since the Nazi era, in a major rebuke of Chancellor Olaf Scholz's ruling center-left consolation. Projections from public broadcasters ARD and ZDF based on exit polls suggest the anti-immigration Nationalist Party alternative for Germany finished first in the eastern German state of Thuringia, securing about 31% to 33% of the vote. The Christian Democratic Union finished second with 24.5% of the votes in Thuringia. Scholz's Social Democratic Party appears to have cleared the 5% threshold needed to make it into the state parliaments. In Saxony, another eastern German state in the heart of what was once communist East Germany, the AFD has 30% to 31% of the vote, putting it neck and neck with the CDU, which has 31.5% to 32%. All other parties have vowed not to form coalitions with the AFD, so it remains to be seen whether it will be able to win any real governing power. However, the FD's success in Thuringia is a huge win nonetheless for a party that was launched only in 2013. The results make grim reading for Scholz, who will seek re-election in 12 months, with his party now polling behind a galvanized AFD. The lawyer for one of the two doctors charged in connection with Matthew Perry's ketamine-related death said his client feels incredibly remorseful for the role the medical professional played in the actor's death, as he appeared in court Friday. Dr. Mark Chavez has agreed to plead guilty to one count of conspiracy to distribute ketamine and has signed a plea agreement. He appeared in Los Angeles Federal Court Friday afternoon for his arraignment. Chavez answered the judge's questions, stating he understood the case against him. Matthew Binninger, Chavez's attorney, told reporters before the court appearance on Friday that Chavez fully accepts responsibility for his role in Perry's death. As part of the deal, Chavez also agreed to immediately give up his medical license. He formally pleaded not guilty during his arraignment on Friday, though a change of plea proceeding will be scheduled for a later date, at which point he will plead guilty. The lawyer said he expects the hearing to occur sometime in October. Chavez faces up to 10 years in prison. He is one of five people facing federal charges in the wake of Perry's death. The Friends actor was discovered unresponsive in a jacuzzi at his Los Angeles home.
If any evidence were needed to underscore that Pope Francis' upcoming trip to Asia and Oceania is the longest, farthest, and most challenging of his pontificate, it's that he's bringing along his secretaries to help him navigate the four-country program while keeping up with work back home. Francis will clock 20,390 miles by air during his September 2nd to 13 visit to Indonesia, Papua New Guinea, East Timor, and Singapore, far passing any of his previous 44 foreign trips and marking one of the longest Pepal trip ever in terms of both days on the road and distance traveled. That's no small feat for a pope who turns 88 in December, uses a wheelchair, lost part of a lung to a respiratory infection as a young man, and had to cancel his last foreign trip at the last minute on doctor's orders. But Francis is pushing ahead with this trip, originally planned for 2020 but postponed due to COVID-19. He's bringing along his medical team of a doctor and two nurses and taking the usual health precautions on the ground. In a novelty, He's also adding his personal secretaries to the traditional Vatican delegation of cardinals, bishops, and security. The long trip recalls the globetrotting travels of St. John Paul II, who visited all four destinations during his quarter-century pontificate, though East Timor was an occupied part of Indonesia at the time of his landmark 1989 trip. A storm triggered landslides and unleashed heavy rains that flooded many northern Philippine areas overnight into Monday leaving at least nine people dead and prompting authorities to suspend classes and government work in the densely populated capital region. According to the Weather Bureau, Tropical Storm Yogi was blowing 115 kilometers northeast of Infada town in Quezon province, southeastern of Manila, by midday on Monday with sustained winds of up to 75 kilometers per hour and gusts of up to 90 kph. The storm, locally called Antang, was moving northwestward at 15 km per hour near the eastern coast of the main northern region of Luzon, where the Weather Bureau warned of possible flash floods and landslides in mountainous provinces. A landslide hit two small shanties on a hillside in Antipolo City on Monday in Rizal province, just west of the capital, killing at least three people, including a pregnant woman. Police spokesperson Colonel Jean Fajardo told reporters that two other people died and ten others were injured in landslides triggered by the storm in the central Philippines. Storm warnings were raised across a large swath of Luzon, and schools at all levels and most government work were suspended due to the storm. For a supposed spy, Vladimir was anything but covert. The white beluga whale had appeared regularly along the coast of Norway since first being spotted in the country's north in April 2019 wearing a harness with what appears to be a mount for a small camera, along with a buckle that read, Equipment St. Petersburg. This prompted speculations that the animal was an escaped spy whale, trained for military purposes in neighboring Russia. The whale seemed to love being around people and quickly captivated local residents, who came up with the name Vladimir. The 14-foot, 2,700-pound whale was found dead on Saturday in the harbor of Stavanger, a city in southwestern Norway, after residing in the area since last year. Marine biologist Sebastian Strand, who had tracked H. Valdemir's adventures for the NGO Marine Mind, said he made the discovery while scouting for the whale and was heartbroken. Strand noted that there were only superficial injuries on H. Valdemir's body and that the cause of death was unclear. An autopsy was being performed on Monday. Even as locals speculated that H. Valdemir might have been on a clandestine mission for the Kremlin, Moscow never claimed the alleged Russian operative as its own. The military use of marine animals is well documented. The answer for yesterday was B. Plummet. The stock market took a sharp plummet after the news of the company's bankruptcy was announced. Did you answer correctly? Now let's delve into the news of Dr. Charged in Matthew Perry's death case. Number one, remorseful. Hui Hende. He was remorseful after realizing how much his words has hurt his friend. Number two, conspiracy. Ing Mo, the police uncovered a conspiracy to overthrow the government. Number three, arraignment. Thi Sen, the suspect's arraignment is scheduled for next week, where he will plead guilty or not guilty. Next, we have a multiple choice question for everyone to practice. Which answer would you choose? You can write your answer in the comments section. The correct answer will be announced tomorrow. And that's all for today's Funday News. Be sure to tune in to Funday News from Monday to Friday and click the link below to join Funday for free. I'm Wei Li, your host. I'll see you next time.